Hi everyone, my name is Michael Hart. I'm VP Research Engineering at Bustle Digital Group. Today I'm going to be talking about saving you and your engineers time by speeding up your CI builds with caching, concurrency, and going serverless. So I'm going to be talking about what the problem is. Is there a problem? I'm going to be talking about um, ways that we can address it and ways that we've addressed it at Bustle, some caveats with that and then I'll give a quick demo. So this is a cartoon from Randall Monroe of XKCD fame from uh, 2007 that I really like. And I think it, it illustrates a, a great issue that many developers have. I think the, the 2020 version of it looks a little bit more like this, um, especially for many of us that don't use compile languages. And look, I actually think there's not really a problem with um, slacking off. I think, I think people should uh, take a break when you finished a big chunk of work, step away from your desk, go and have a coffee, you know, um, revel in that, in that uh, work that you've just pushed up to your repo. But there are plenty of times where that's not the case, where you, you do want to get a, a production fix out and you don't want to be waiting 30 minutes for your CI build to finish. Or uh, in our case at Bustle, our backend project has six software engineers. We merge about four PRs a day for pull requests. And each time one of those pull requests is merged, the other developers need to get their pull requests up to date with the changes in master. And each time that happens, they need to run a build. And they don't want to be waiting each time. Um, similarly, you, know, you don't want to be sort of context switching when you've got a build running in the background. It's very hard to to focus on something else. So I think, I think speeding up builds is, is something that we do want to achieve because it's not, it's not just at times when we can sort of afford to step away from the desk. So one great way to do that is obviously just by doing less, doing less in our build workflows. We can, um, we can cache uh, installs, for example, NPM installs, pip installs, Instead of having to go through the whole process of resolving dependencies, if those dependencies are already cached somewhere, we can pull them down um, and have them ready to go. Similarly with build artifacts, so uh, with TypeScript, for example, or linting or Webpack or any of those tools, they all support build caching of some sort, um, which makes the build run a lot faster if you have that cache ready to go. Similarly, uh, SAM CLI 1.9 just released support for, for caching. So that will make your builds and deploys run a lot faster if you're using that. Um, another thing we want to try and avoid is lots of serial steps. So lots of steps in a row. Um, each step sort of has an overhead with it. So try to reduce that, reduce that into one step if possible or do them in parallel. Um, avoid using tools that you don't actually need. A lot of people will install JQ, for example, in their in their builds um, because they need JSON parsing with the AWS CLI, but the AWS CLI has uh, JSON querying inbuilt. You don't actually need to install that. So try to avoid, uh, you see if there are tools that you're installing that you don't actually need to. If there are tools that you need, see if you can bake them into your base image. Um, it, many, many CI systems support providing your own image. And so if you have those tools ready to go, you don't need to install them during the workflow step and you can really save yourself some time. And another thing to do is, is look out for faster tools. Um, in the JavaScript world, for example, Parcel and Webpack are, are sort of notoriously slow and there are, there are newcomers like ES Build and SWC that, that can run these builds uh, 100, 200 times faster. So have a look out there for, for whether there are tools that can do exactly the same thing that you're doing, but just do, do them a lot faster. And another way uh, to speed things up is to do more in parallel. So a lot of, a lot of CI systems support parallel jobs. Uh, AWS Code Build calls them batch builds. And um, you, can, you can split your builds up um, logically in a number of ways. Often you've got testing and linting and formatting and type checking and size checking and all of these sorts of things can all be done in parallel ideally. Uh, and that, that'll save you a lot of time. And then when it comes to testing, there, there are a lot of test runners out there that support um, running tests in parallel. And if, if you can use them, then certainly do. 
It won't always be an option, uh, especially if you're talking to shared state of some sort of database. Um, you'll need to parallel tests can sort of override each other. So in, in cases like that, you'll want to isolate the tests. Um, and what, one thing I like doing is, is splitting up the test job into sort of sub jobs. So say three sub jobs and each of those sub jobs tests a third, um, a third of the test files. And one, one simple way to sort of split that up, you can use Unix tools. This is, this is an example which you can go and study in detail later, but it's an example um, of a GitHub Actions workflow, but um, AWS Code Build also supports matrix builds where you're splitting a job up into a number of different pieces. Um, here we're splitting it up into three and so that each job is only testing every third test file where we're sort of outputting those on the command line, uh, running, running an awk command that is, is pulling each, um, each third file and passing it to a particular job runner. So this way we can sort of logically split up our tests without having to, without having to modify the code in any way. How this looked for us, um, our journey with speeding up our builds at Bustle um, sort of a year ago, we, we were in a pretty good place. I think we had split our testing and our linting out, but we had started, we started using TypeScript, which added quite a lot of overhead um, we had added Postgres, um, which we wanted to test um, using integration tests as well. So our, our tests had really started to slow down a little bit and we were looking at ways at, at, of speeding them up. They were taking sort of more than 10 minutes, which, you know, for some people that's quite fast, but for us, we really wanted them to be faster. So we looked at some of these techniques. We started using uh, NPM installing, ca caching our NPM installs so that that ran a lot quicker. We split out some of the linting steps so that we would do type checking and linting in parallel. Um, and then, and you know, that got us down to sort of six minutes. And then, and then we continued that even further. We started um, caching build artifacts, caching our TypeScript builds, caching our Webpack builds, caching as many things as we could and split out the jobs basically as much as we could. Um, so we were doing size checking, we were doing code formatting and linting and all these sorts of things in parallel, which is great, but at a certain point, um, you do run into some limitations there. Most CI systems have a sort of limit on how many concurrent jobs you can run. That's usually in the few dozen. Uh, this is true for, for code build and for GitHub Actions and tools like that. And as well as that, they tend to build per minute, um, which means you know if, if you've got six parallel jobs running, they can all take less than a minute, but you're going to be billed for six minutes uh, instead of, you know, in our case, we, we were sort of down to two minutes. Instead of being billed for two minutes, we're being billed for six minutes. So we're thinking, what's the next uh, step for us? Um, and that's why when we embraced Lambda to, to do our builds, um, AWS Lambda, it's great. It, it's, um, it has pricing per 100 milliseconds. You can do, uh, it supports a thousand concurrency out of the box. Um, the builds sp spin up in milliseconds. So it ticks a lot of those boxes um, and you're running it uh, on your own AWS infrastructure, which is great as well. Um, so, so we got our we got our builds down from ten minutes to to under a minute, a ten x improvement, which is great. And this is the sort of screen that our developers will see on their on their pull requests um, now, with, with all these sort of jobs finishing quite quickly, and and obviously being able to get feedback quicker as well. If if any of the builds fail, uh, they're going to be notified about that a lot quicker. They can fix it, push it up again, and and then within a minute know know whether everything's fixed or not. So how did we achieve this? Well, we used a, a system called LAMCI, which I created four and a half years ago, a serverless CI system. And recently I've put some time into integrating that with GitHub Actions. GitHub Actions supports your, having your own self-hosted runner. So running, running your own runners on your own infrastructure, on your AWS infrastructure. Uh, but part of the issue is that they expect these self-hosted runners to be running the whole time, to be connected uh, the whole time, which is sort of an antithesis to the serverless mindset. So LAMCI does the listening on your behalf, and then when a build comes through, it will send you an event on AWS EventBridge, which is a great solution for this because you can filter 
you can filter these build events as they come through based on a, a label or, a, or some sort of criteria and figure out whether you want that build to be done on Lambda or maybe you want it to be done on Fargate or maybe even code build. And then the results of those builds are, are sent back uh, to GitHub Actions. Um, and this really enabled us to, to scale up and scale out our builds. Uh, there are some limitations with Lambda, especially the, on, the, on the disk front. I think overcoming those, you can use Lambda layers. Um, that gives you a whole bunch more space. So bake into to Lambda layers, whatever you can there. You can also use um, Amazon EFS, which is, which is a relatively newcomer to the Lambda world that allows you to attach an EFS mount, which can store gigabytes of gigabytes of data and and you can you can store whatever tools and whatever things you need there, and then read them during your lambda. I wouldn't I wouldn't advise writing to it. It can be slow for that use case, but certainly reading is a great use case. And then just try and reduce the number of dependencies you've got. You know, it's a, it's a good excuse to really uh, clean out the cobwebs of of your dependencies and things like that. And, and look, AWS is always adding features. They're always coming out with new things, um, always always increasing their limits. So so watch this space. And uh, now I'll show you a quick example of what this looks like. Okay, so what does this look like? I'll show you a lightning quick demo. I've created a test project here. It's a JavaScript project. It does some testing and linting as part of its CI. I've already got that running on GitHub Actions. We can see here the results of the, the last job on the main branch it took a minute and 43 to run. We have 80 tests running minute 43 to run those 80 tests. And we want to make that a lot faster. So we want to, we, we also want it running in our own AWS environment instead of on uh, GitHub Actions environment. So the first thing is to make sure that we've registered our self-hosted runners here. We've registered them, um, LAMCI is listening on our behalf and it's listening for, for workflows that match these particular labels and then we'll send them on event bridge with these labels so we can listen for them with our lambda so we have we have a hundred um, runners registered here what do they look like um, so here's an aws sam template of of what the lambda itself looks like that will run our action when we get the event uh, from lambci so it's a node.js 12.x Lambda, it has a couple of layers in it, a utils layer, a runner layer with the open source GitHub Actions runner. And it listens, more importantly, on event bridge for any event that comes from lambci.actions that matches this particular label, runner underscore, and then the label that we chose before. So any label will start with runner underscore and then, and then have a value uh, that we chose before. What does it look like to turn, to hook that up with our repo. I've got a pull request I've already written to show this. Uh, so previously on our main branch, we were running on the internal Ubuntu runner. Uh, we now change that to run on our own self-hosted runners um, in AWS, in Lambda, with our Node.js 12.x Lambda. So these are the labels that will be sent um, and that will be that will be listened for. And we use the same strategy that we chatted about before in the slides to split up these tests into eight parallel jobs. So each, each test job will only be testing one eighth of the files. So should run a lot faster than what we were seeing before. Um, we use the same pattern here to pass those files to Mocha so that Mocha is only getting an eighth of the files each time. And then here we output an environment variable just to show that we're running on Lambda. This is a native AWS environment variable. So we'll do a quick empty commit and a push on that branch um, for that pull request. And then we'll come back, we'll refresh. Uh, there should be no changes, it was just an empty commit. Um, the UI can take a little bit of time to update, but we can see here that we've got our lint job and our test has been split into eight parallel jobs. Each of these are running. Um, some of them will be running quicker than others, but they're all running pretty quickly. They're already, already testing. Um, they've done the caching. The UI can, can sometimes be a little bit out of date. Some of these have, have finished already. We can see here, this one has finished the test. That AWS execution environment variable 
um, we can see is coming out as AWS Lambda Node.js 12.x because we are in fact running these on Lambda. So we, our job is finished. Um, we can go over to the PR summary and see, get an idea of how quick those tests were. Um, they all finished very quickly, uh, 14, 15 seconds. That's a lot quicker than the sort of minute 43 we were seeing before. Um, so you can really see the advantage of, of having these tests run in parallel and, and having them run serverlessly because we're not paying for any time uh, that these tests aren't running. So thank you. I hope that's given you some insight into how you can speed up your CI builds. Go check out lambci.com for more info on how to run them serverlessly on AWS. Uh, and please uh, fill out the session survey uh, after this is done. Thanks.